a question we often get asked is, what are the steps to get the Nutanix database service, formerly known as ERA, set up in a Nutanix environment? It's a pretty straightforward process, so let's get started. And welcome to Tech Bytes. My name is David Teague, Technical Market Engineer, and this is video four in our database solution series. Today, we're gonna to show you how easy it is to install the Nutanix database service or NDB appliance. So the first thing you would need to do to get NDB installed is either download the NDB install file for your supported hypervisor or get the link for that file from the Nutanix portal. Once you have done that, you can open Prism Element on the cluster you'd like to install NDB on. You would then go to Settings and Image Configuration and choose Upload Image. You would then provide a name for the image. I usually use the version of the software I'm installing as the name. You can also add notes about this image in the annotation field. You would then change the image type to disk, then click either from URL or upload file. I grab the link from the portal as it saves me time since I don't need to download the software to my machine. This will only work if your Nutanix cluster has access to the Nutanix portal website. With the image path filled out, I will choose save. We'll be back when the image is done downloading from the Nutanix portal. And we're back. If we go to the image configuration screen, we can see that the error image shows active, which means it's ready to be used. Now we're going to head over to the drop down menu and choose VMs and then click on table. And from here, we're going to choose on create VM. In the create VM screen, we'll need to provide a name for the VM and you can also provide a description and you can leave the time zone as the default. Moving down, we're going to fill out the CPU and cores. The current user guide specifies one vCPU with four cores for the compute. And then we'll put 16 for the gigabytes of memory as specified in the user guide. Then we're going to scroll down a bit till we see the disk areas and choose add new disk. On the next screen, we're going to change the operation to clone from image service, leave the bus type as SCSI, and under image, choose the NDB image that we created earlier. Then click save. Then we'll scroll down a bit more and choose add new NIC. You can choose to place the NDB appliance on any network that is already set up in your Nutanix environment. Once you've made that choice, click Add. With everything set up on the VM, we will now choose Save to start the Create VM process. It will take just a few seconds for the VM to be created. And once you find the newly created VM, you will then choose to power it on. Once the appliance is powered on and the services have started, if the network you chose and set up has DHCP, you will get an IP address automatically. If you need to assign a static IP, there is an easy process to follow in the user guide. We will now open a new tab and go to the IP of the NDB appliance. You will first be presented with the screen to accept the EULA and then choose continue. Then you will set a new admin password. The password does need to be complex, so no more simple passwords like Nutanix for you. Once the password is set, you will then need to log in with that admin user and password, which will lead you to the welcome screen to guide you through the setup. We will need the Nutanix cluster virtual IP address and an administrator user and password. To get the virtual IP, you would go back to Prism Element for the cluster. Click on the upper left where the name of the cluster is, and the screen that pops up will show you the virtual IP for the cluster. You can copy that IP and hit the X in the upper right so no changes are saved. We'll then pop back into the NDB UI and paste the IP address in the section and fill out the user and password for a user that has admin access to the same cluster. Then click Next. On the next screen, if your Nutanix cluster has the different services segmented to different networks, we would set that up here. This cluster is not set up this way, so we're just going to click Next. If you're not sure, you can click Skip and set this up later. The services screen is next, and you make any changes here that the appliance is detected. You can also set up an SMTP server now if you would like to have the appliance email you for events. Once you've set this screen up to your satisfaction, click Next. The appliance will then validate settings before moving to the next screen. Then we're going to choose the storage container on the Nutanix cluster where you want NDB to provision the database servers. When you make that choice, choose Next. On the Network Profile screen, you can choose to create the profile later, but we're going to do it now. We're going to set up our first network. If you want NDB to manage this network's IP pool, you would check the Manage IP Address pool and then set it up here. You can also add managed and unmanaged networks later. Once you have it set up to your liking, click Next. Now NDB will start downloading the most recent images for the included open source databases and set them up. You do not have to wait for this to be complete. You can click on Get Started and it will take you to the Getting Started workflow. From the Getting Started workflow, you can choose the drop down menu in the upper left and choose a screen like the dashboard if you want to see the status of the NDB appliance. So that wraps up setting a new NDB appliance. Come back soon for more videos in the solution series as we walk through setting up our NDB to manage the databases in our Nutanix ecosystem. 
Be sure to check other videos in the Nutanix database service playlist listed here. And while you're here, click on that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next new video.